Lessig's example is perfect for uh, demonstrating the relationship between the kinetic energy and the potential energy of an object. So we have a hammer in a drop forging machine with a mass of 200 kilograms and it's allowed to fall 5 meters onto the component. Determine the velocity of the hammer at the point of impact and the kinetic energy. So here's the situation. We can imagine this drop hammer coming down and then striking something at the bottom. In all these sorts of problems, as I've mentioned already, just extract the information that you're given and know that the mass of this thing is 200 kilograms and know the height is 5 meters and g is 9.81. So what I'm assuming here is that the potential energy at the top that this thing has got is converted to kinetic energy at the bottom. So what I do is I find out what the potential energy at the top is using the formula for potential energy and then I assume and that's a big assumption that all that energy is converted to kinetic energy at the bottom so I'm ignoring any losses due to friction all that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy so I can find that kinetic energy it's the same as the kinetic energy, uh, potential energy at the top then I use the formula for kinetic energy that we've written down this one here rearrange it to find the velocity so that's the way we go about these problems so it's very common to have to rearrange this formula for velocity if you look at your formula sheet you're not given the formula in that form and so in an exam you might well have to rearrange this formula for velocity so if you're feeling at all unsure about that either memorize it in the correct form v equals or just get those steps in your head okay but we'll look at it now and you can see how it works so let's look at this example then so what I'm going to do is find the potential energy at the top say that potential energy equals the kinetic energy and then find the velocity and that's the process I would go through in a problem like this I'm converting energy from one form to another so the potential energy at the top is MGH I check units are consistent G equals 9.81 newtons per kilogram or if I want to think of this as an acceleration due to gravity meters per second squared so when I'm thinking about units I need to make sure that if times involve it's in seconds if mass is involved it's in kilograms and if distances are involved they're in meters four units to be cons consistent with this value for g that must be the case so I've got no choice height must be in meters and mass must be in kilograms and then I'll get a, a correct answer in this particular case I think we'll find that they're already in the appropriate unit so that's not a problem so the mass is 200 kilograms times 9.81 times the height which is 5 meters that's a thousand five times 200 is a thousand thousand times 9.81 I don't need a calculator for that 9810 and what am I going to measure that in joules so that's my potential energy and then I might state the next thing I would say I'm going to now state that kinetic energy equals the potential energy ignoring losses due to friction etc so this is a 100% efficient energy transfer if you like so the kinetic energy is 9810 joules if a problem said so much energy is lost through friction or 10% is lost through friction I would have to adjust that figure at this point wouldn't I okay but at the moment we're ignoring it so 9810 joules 
So now we want to find the velocity. Well, I've got to find the velocity means I need to rearrange this formula for V. Right, let's do this as a group. What would you do first? I've got to get, try and get V squared on its own. Right, how would I do that thing, Teddy? Right, divide by half or multiply by two. Same thing. But you're right, divide both sides by half or times by two, I get two times the kinetic energy is mv squared. Don't I? You see that? And then divide by m. So now I've got v squared on its own. Finally, I square root the answer. Now, you've got a choice. Either you remember that formula for velocity, or you feel confident that you can rearrange it, given the formula for kinetic energy. Because it's quite likely you'll need to find the velocity. So now I've got to that point, I can just put my values in. V equals the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which is 9,810 over the mass, which is 200. And I would do that in one hit on the calculator. So I'd hit the square root button, the fraction button, and then put those values in, and then round my answer. <coughs> so do that on the calculator, and then tell me what you see if you agree. So answer 9.9 .9 meters per second to two significant figures. You've rounded it to that.